Welcome to this program of the Heroes of the Gospel on the Divine Mercy Sunday. I am Father Arturo Lemnikian, and I'm presently at our mother house in São Paulo, Brazil. And I'm very pleased to give you a quick overview on the enormous advantages that the Lord Jesus Christ gave for the Divine Mercy Sunday. And I'm going to tell you this right now. First of all, I would like to tell you a little bit about Sister Faustina Kowalska. This, uh, this Polish uh, nun was a very much uh, loved soul of, uh, of our Lord Jesus Christ, who uh, had several visions and conversations with, uh, with Jesus, starting in 1931, for approximately eight years. She was um, the, the third child of a peasant family, of 10 children in the countryside of Poland in the beginning of the 20th century. And uh, very soon she realized that she had, a, she had a religious vocation. When she was 18 years old, she asked her parents if she could join a convent. But the parents very, very strongly said no, no way, it's not possible, etc. So uh, she started to think, well, then what I'm going to do in my life? And she started to look around other other possibilities. And one day she was at a party with her friends, with some friends, but she was not feeling well. She was not feeling that that, that was for her. Um, that was not what she was called to. And uh, uh, during the party, our Lord appears next to her. And she sees our Lord and uh, our Lord says, says to her, till, till when I have to wait for you? So she gets really, you know, shocked and she leaves discreetly, she leaves the party and she goes to a church. Funny enough, a church, maybe because it was in the evening, I, I guess, the church was open and she goes inside the church and she prays and then our Lord appears to her again and she says, go to uh, Warsaw and join a convent. I will, I will be with you. So she goes with very little things. She, she only has one dress, you know, and uh, she decides to, uh, to go and she, she looks for a convent, but she tries several convents and all of them, one after the other, says no, they, they will not accept her. Hmm? So finally, she, uh, she comes to the uh, Sisters of Mercy and they accept her and she joins the sisters and uh, in 1933 she does her perpetual vows. Hmm? So uh, the life was not easy. This uh, is very common, you know, for those who have a great vocation, they are not understood by their family and sometimes by the natural family and sometimes they're not understood by their spiritual family either. And she was a little bit persecuted in the, uh, in the convent. And even one sister said that, um, uh, that uh, she couldn't understand how uh, she was so uh, bad treated by, uh, by one of the sisters in the convent. Hmm? So uh, she perseveres and uh, she, she's called to do all kinds of works, of course, and she has to, she has to do some, some cooking also in the kitchen. And she was not very, very, uh, um, uh, very, very well trained to, uh, to deal with, uh, with potatoes and, uh, and she, um, uh, she, uh, she tried to do it, uh, uh, cooking potatoes, she, she tried to do it at her best, but um, things didn't go very well. But one day, she is cooking potatoes, and um, at a certain moment, she opens the, uh, she takes the lid off the, uh, the pan, and, uh, and she sees inside that there are no potatoes, there are flowers, there are roses. So our Lord sending her, her a message, that, uh, you know, holiness is not, uh, is not about great deeds. Hmm? It is about great love. What is important is not what you do, but how much you love. Hmm? So uh, she perseveres and uh, uh, Jesus tells her, in the Old Testament, I send my prophets to my people with thunderbolts. Hmm? 
to, you know, to, to threaten them. But today I'm sending my messengers with the message of mercy. And she is the apostle of mercy. And uh, our Lord Jesus Christ, she, uh, he calls her, her secret, his secretary of my deepest mysteries. So uh, the pages of the diary are full of uh, memoirs of the visions and intimate conversation that she had with our Lord, with Our Lady, with saints, you know, with angels, with uh, even souls in purgatory. And she even has, has the visions of hell and purgatory. And, um, and our Lord says to her, may every soul glorify my goodness. I desire to trust of uh, the, the trust, the, I, I want the trust of my creatures. Exhort souls to a great confidence in my inconceivable mercy. May the weak sin soul not be afraid to approach me, for even if his sins were more numerous than the grains of sand on earth, they would still be submerged in the abyss of my mercy. This reminds us a little bit, you know, the uh, Psalm 51 of David, the, uh, the miserere in, in which uh, David asks forgiveness to, um, to God uh, when he says, wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. So um, our Lord continues telling her that I wish the priest to announce this great mercy that uh, that sinful, for, for the sinful souls. May the sinner not be afraid to approach me. The flames of, of mercy burn me, and I want them to pour uh, on, to be poured on souls. The mercy of God, you know, has to be poured on souls. In uh, February 1931, she uh, received the order to uh, do uh, a painting of our Lord Jesus Christ with this, with the rays, you know, uh, white, blue, and red, etc. And our Lord explains that the, the white rays means the water, hmm, which justifies souls. And the red means the blood, which is the life of the soul, meaning that the water cleans the soul and the, uh, uh, the water and the, uh, represented by the, by the, the, the color white. Hmm. And the color red means the soul, means the, uh, um, the, the life of the soul, hmm? the grace. In spite of all the extraordinary gifts that she received, including uh, stigmas, she had stigmas, prophecy, discernment of spirits, mystical spousal, Saint Faustina was well aware that holiness consists in, fooling, uh, in fulfilling the will of God. Hmm? And uh, even if it lets to offer him herself as a victim soul. So she had to suffer. And she writes, I know that the grain of wheat, in order to become food, needs to be crushed and crushed between the milestone. So also I, in order to be useful to the church and to souls, I have to be destroyed, although outwardly, no one perceive my sacrifice. So it's an internal sacrifice that is the, the essence of her, um, uh, of, of her life, of, of, of her spiritual life, giving herself to our Lord Jesus Christ for the salvation of souls. So um, she is the object of suspicion in the convent, as I just mentioned. One of the sisters one said about her, Sister Faustina is either silly or holy, because really uh, not any, any normal person will tolerate that someone always treated her so harshly. So she was really bad treated by some of the, uh, of the sisters in the convent. This also happened to Bernadette, for example, in Aver, you know. So uh, our Lord says, my daughter, do not live for yourself, but live for souls. So think about the souls. Think, think about what you have to do and forget about yourself. For as uh, he himself said to St. Faustina, our Lord Jesus Christ said, I am pleased 
with souls who turn to my mercy. To those souls I grant graces that exceed their request. So I will give them more than when they ask me. I cannot punish even the greatest of sinners if he appeals to my compassion. But I justly justify him in my unfathomable and inscrutable mercy. So the mercy of, uh, of our Lord is, is impossible to measure, is something infinite. And uh, he wants this to be known. And this is the essence of the Divine Mercy Sunday, you know, the, the mercy of God to be known. And what um, Jesus has prepared as a gift for, um, for those who turn to him on this Divine Mercy Sunday and, uh, and ask forgiveness, our Lord Jesus Christ uh, promises a total forgiveness of the temporal punishment. You know, when, when we sin, we offend God, we offend our conscience, and we offend the order of the universe, we offend the others. Hmm? And we have to pay reparation. It is a little bit like if someone, you know, uh, for example, breaks his neighbor's window by accident. So he goes and asks forgiveness, and the, uh, the, the neighbor forgives him, but still he has to pay the window. The same thing with God. So we still have to pay for our sins, and this is a temporal punishment. And uh, our Lord Jesus Christ uh, gives us the possibility on Divine Sunday, Sunday um, uh, on uh, Divine Mercy Sunday, to uh, receive a plenary indulgence in which we are forgiven of all the temporal punishment that we have to pay, the debt that we have to pay for our sins. Mm -hmm. And uh, instead of paying in purgatory, mm -hmm. this debt you know, can be paid on earth, but it can also be forgiven through this, um, through, through this uh, gift of our Lord Jesus Christ. And how, how, how can we get this, this gift? Uh, basically, our Lord Jesus, uh, Jesus uh, Christ, he asks us for, he puts four conditions. First of all, we have to go to confession. Secondly, we have to receive the Eucharist. Thirdly, perform an act of mercy, meaning we have to do something good to someone, hmm? to the church, to, uh, to, to our neighbor, to whoever. Hmm? And then we have to, to make an uh, act of trust in his mercy and say to our Lord, I trust in you. Hmm? So, uh, for example, our Lord says, I desire that the Feast of Mercy be a refuge and shelter of souls, and especially for poor sinners. So, it's a shelter for us. It's a shelter for sinners in which we are, are going to be protected against uh, all type of evils. On that day, on the Divine Mercy Sunday, the very death of my tender mercy are open. I pour out a whole ocean of graces upon those souls who approach the fountain of my mercy. The soul who goes to confession and receives Holy Communion shall obtain complete forgiveness of sin and the punishment of sin. So, you know, uh, we have to take advantage of this. I know that uh, maybe uh, we cannot go to Mass on this, um, uh, on this uh, Divine Mercy Sunday and therefore we cannot even receive Holy Communion, we cannot even confession, etc. But we have to have the desire, and the desire that we have to have on this Sunday, then we will accomplish, accomplish um, the requirements when it's possible. Hmm? Uh, 